Good morning boys and girls and welcome to Children's Church this morning. We have a great program for you today. I had a bit of a problem this week. Um, I couldn't find a joke. So uh, I thought I'd tell you the one about the pizza, uh, but it's a little cheesy. And then there's the one about paper, but it's terrible. And I've got the one about construction, but I'm still working on it. Anyway, that's it for me today, and I hope you enjoy your Sunday. Hi guys and girls, I just want to wish everyone who had a birthday this week a very happy birthday and I would just like to say a short prayer over you. Thank you Jesus that your child had another birthday this year. I pray for protection and faithfulness to follow them wherever they go and I pray for blessings to shower over them. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Enjoy the rest of the program. Hi boys and girls, so today I'm doing the offering and I want to speak to you about love. when you love someone you give. Like I have a gift here for, for Uncle Sheldon because it's his birthday and I want to give something to him. And so it's the same that when you love God, let's go back, when God gave his son for us to die on the cross, man, before you were even born, before I was even born, um, he gave Jesus, his only son, to die on the cross for our sins, for everything and what a great gift it is. That is love. And so in return, we want to respond to give something back to Him, whether it is worshipping Him, whether it's our time. But today we have the opportunity to give an offering to Him. And that's one of the ways we give back to Jesus. And so I want to encourage you that when you give with a cheerful heart, because you love him, because of what he has done for you, because of what he maybe has done for you over this lockdown period, um, in any way he has come through for you, I want to encourage you to give today with a cheerful heart. Because you know what, boys and girls, when you do that with a cheerful heart, in return, you will receive something. Because that is who God is. He loves us, he cares for us, and in your giving, is your receiving. When you give, you will receive again. Be blessed and be encouraged. I hope you guys are enjoying your break. Today's memory verse is out of Matthew 5 verse 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I'm going to say it again. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. One more. Let's do this one more time. But I tell you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I hope you guys are having a blessed time. Goodbye. Hi there viewers. I'm Sela, one of the children church leaders. And I'm here to give you the object lesson. So I have a candle, as you can all see, and some water, but I don't have gas. So the gas represents our response that we do in life. 
As a scandal, there's a flame, there's fire. If someone responds to us in a hurtful manner, by saying hurtful things like, I hate you, the hurt, the hate you, is like gas. If you add gas to a flame, it's a fire, it will obviously make it go bigger. And it will not really destroy the fire, it just make things worse. Same thing. If someone says, I hate you, and you respond back by saying, I hate you more, you're not making the situation better. You're just causing it to be even worse. So rather take a step back and be like water. Water's calm. And if you add water to a flame, to a fire, you obviously destroy it. Like this. Cool. So like it says in the Bible, a gentle answer turns with, but a harsh word stir up anger. And like the scandal as she says, stay humble, work hard and be kind. So be humble when you respond. Work harder in the way you react to situations and be kind. Enjoy the rest of the program. Today's Bible story. David was first a shepherd boy watching over sheep. As he grew older, he used to go to war and was a great fighter. He also played the harp for the king. Saul was king over the land of Israel at that time. But the people grew fond of David and this made Saul very upset. So he started to dislike David. One day when David was playing the harp for the king, because the king was in a bad mood, King Saul threw a spear at David, nearly killing him. David knew he had to run away. King Saul took 3,000 men to hunt David down. It was at this time when King Saul needed to use the toilet, so he went to a cave nearby. David and his friends were hiding in that same cave, his friends told him to kill King Saul. Instead, David cut a piece of King Saul's robe when he wasn't watching. When King Saul left the cave, David shouted to the king that he could have killed him, but he chose not to. Good morning, boys and girls. Here are the questions for your Bible story. Number one, what did David do for King Saul? He played the harp for him. Number two, did King Saul always like David? No, as David grew older, he began to hate him. Number three, what did King Saul try to do to David? He tried to kill him. Number four, what did David do to King Saul, his enemy? Nothing. Number five, why did God bless David? Because he loved his enemy instead of getting revenge. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your day. What's wrong, Ben? I don't have any friends. I was playing football and everyone bailed on me for no reason. Well, why do you think that is? I don't know. I'm always nice. Whatever you say, little brother. Yeah? Well, you have fat ankles. I do not have fat ankles. <laughs> God, if I'm not loving others as myself, then show me, cause, whoa, who are you? I'm an angel. God sent me here to give you a rare glimpse. A, a glimpse of what? Of your love walk, past, present, and future. You know all that? God knows everything about you. Ben Ezer, age 13. Okay, okay. So, how does it work? Close your eyes. Open your eyes. Do you remember this? Yeah, I think this was last week. Then you'll remember demanding the front seat, even though your sister Shotgun, really wanted it. But why should she get it and not call me? The back seat. That's no way to treat your sister. 
Ben, every day you have the opportunity to put other people's needs ahead of your own. You mean you want me to give her what she wants? But she never gives me what I want. Well, if you love her, you won't keep track of that. Now close your eyes. I can't find my coat. Have any of you seen my tan plaid coat? Dude, just forget about it. Come on, let's play. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah, so is this morning. I played the best, better than anyone. I tell y'all quit because they were cold. Quitters. All right. Yes. Ah, oh, yes. Gotcha. Love never acts like a big shot to make others feel bad. It's pride. But I was awesome. You saw me. Better than all those guys. Really? At everything? Close your eyes. Open your eyes. Where are we? This is next week, when you fail your math test. I fail that test? Yeah, because you were so mean to all your friends. You know, the ones who are good at math and could have helped you. So nobody would explain it to you. Hey, Ben, what you doing? Just studying for math. Hey, you're good at math. Help me. Sorry, dude, but I have to go practice football. But you're the best at everything, right? You'll figure it out. Oh, they wouldn't help me? They're supposed to be my friends. Like you were supposed to be their friend? Yeah, exactly. Wait, I see. What do you see? I need to grow up in love for them and for me. Go on. Like, I need to treat them the way that I want to be treated, and then they'll treat me that way too. Use 1 Corinthians 13 as a checklist for life, and you'll grow up in love. Now close. Can I see the math test first? Kidding, kidding. From now on, I'm gonna treat everybody like I want to be treated. Oh no, I was mean to Katie too. Katie? Katie, you don't have fat ankles. Hi guys! Today we are talking about loving your enemies. John 15 verse 12. This is my commandment. Love each other as I loved you. Hi guys, I'm Cindy and this is Layla. And today we're talking about loving your enemies as Layla has said. Um, in most cases, people have had enemies and um, it could be anyone. It could be like a bully at school and it could be somebody who makes fun of you for the way you dress or for being a Christian even. And the Bible tells us to walk in love and to pray for our enemies and that's not how the world expects us to do it, right? They expect you to be mean back. Um, but that's not what Jesus wants. So tell me, have you, who do you consider to be an enemy, firstly? A person who bullies, hurts your feelings, and mm -hmm. maybe a person who dislikes you. Yeah, maybe, yeah. And have you ever had an enemy somewhere, maybe at yes. school, or like at ballet or somewhere? Yes. You have. And then what did you do? What did you do about that situation? I just told my parents. <laughs> you told the parents. <laughs> do you think that it's hard to pray for your enemies and to walk in love? Yes. Okay. So have you ever prayed for your enemy? No. You haven't? Mm -mm. Well, Jesus wants us to pray for our enemies. He wants to, us to walk in love. And then what he can do is to change your enemy's heart. That's very cool. That is, that, that's very cool. Let me read Matthew 5, verse 44 to everyone. But I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. So, everyone watching, and us included, we know now, when there's something in our lives, someone in our lives that is our enemy, we need to. Walk in love and pray for them.
Bye. Bye. Love you all.